Chapter 2 Tree Identification Objectives 1. Describe how all plants are classified and how scientific names are based on the classification system. 2. Explain what a scientific name is, why scientific names are used, and how they are written. 3. Explain how plant characteristics such as growth habit, texture, and color can be used in tree identification. 4. Describe how leaf arrangement and morphology are used to help identify trees. 5. Compare various leaf shapes and types of leaf margins, bases, and apices. 6. Identify trees without leaves by using bud and twig characteristics. Introduction Identification of tree species is the first step before prescribing tree care. Because diseases, pests, and cultural requirements can vary among species, arborists should be able to identify a tree before attempting a diagnosis or treatment recommendation. Plant species identification is a requirement in order to apply pesticides legally. Accurate identification requires a calm combination of knowledge and experience. Once identification skills have been developed, proficiency will come with practice and repeated exposure to woody landscape plants at different times during the year. Plant classification Plant classification, or taxonomy, is based on biological characteristics. The highest classification level is the kingdom and, not too surprisingly, trees are in the plant kingdom. The second classification level is the division, or phylum. This level further separates vascular plants, plants with xylem and phloem, from plants lacking vascular tissue. Vascular plants are subdivided into those with seeds, covered by an ovary, fruit, or angio sperms, and those with naked seeds, or gymnosperms. Ginkgos and conifers, cone-bearing plants, are gymnosperms. Flowering plants, including most deciduous trees and broad-leaved evergreens, are angiosperms. Angiosperms are divided into two classes, dicotyledons, dicots, two seed leaves, and monocotyledons, monocots, one seed leaf. Dicots include most common tree species, except conifers, banana, and palms. Monocots include grasses, lilies, orchids, and palms. The vascular tissues of monocots are in bundles, scattered throughout the stem. Because these bundles do not increase in girth, Palm stems have little ability to increase in diameter. Classes of plants are separated into orders and then families. Plants in the same family have common characteristics, most notably their types of flowers and fruits. Honey locust, Gladitsia spp, and redbud, Cercus spp, are both in the Fabaceae family, legumes. Their flowers are morphologically similar and both bear their seeds in pods that open along two sides. Plants that are very closely related will show similar characteristics, particularly in their reproductive structures, and may be classified in the same genus. For example, all oaks repro duce by acorns and are classified in the genera Quercus and Lithocarpus. In general, plants within a species will freely interbreed with each other, but not as easily, or at all with plants outside of the species. The species is the level that identifies the particular plant. The word species is both singular and plural. The species name is a combination of the genus name and the specific epithet, name. Some people use a common saying to help them remember the taxonomic hierarchy from kingdom down to species, kings play chess on fat, gray stumps. Classification of Acer Saccharum, Sugar Maple, Kingdom Phylum, Division Class, Order, Family, Genus, Specific Epithet, Magnoliophyta, Angiosperms, Magnoliopsida, Dicotyledons, Sapindales, Acraceae, Sapindaceae, Acer, Saccharum Genus plus Specific Epithet, Species A general understanding of plant classification can help an arborist learn to identify plants. Plants that are closely related have similar characteristics. This knowledge can be helpful in diagnosis because trees in the same family or genus are often susceptible to the same diseases, insect pests, and other disorders. 
Plant Nomenclature Plant nomenclature is the naming of plants. Arborists are often familiar with common names of trees because they have learned to identify them through years of field experience. However, it is important to realize that the exclusive use of common names can lead to confusion and misunderstanding. One tree may have several common names. Carpinus caroliniana is known as American hornbeam, blue beech, ironwood, and musclewood. Sev aral tree species may have the same common name. For instance, Magnolia exulangiana, Spathodia campanulata, and Liriodendron tulipifera are all called tulip tree in different areas of the world. Even common names can be misleading. For example, Douglas fir is not a fir, bald cypress is not a cypress, and mountain ash is not a species of ash. Each plant has a unique scientific name that is the same throughout the world. Scientific names of plants are based on a species classification system, and each scientific name has at least two parts. The first part of a scientific name is the genus, plural, is genera, which is written with a capitalized first letter. Plants in the same genus are closely related and show similar characteristics, particularly in their flowers and fruit. The second part of the name identifies the specific epithet and is not capitalized. The species is composed of the genus and specific epithet. Both the genus and specific epithet are writ ten in italics, if possible, or underlined. Picea pungens Washingtonia robusta acer saccharum, Ulmus americana, eucalyptus globules, Colorado spruce, Mexican fan palm sugar maple, American elm, blue gum eucalyptus. Hybrids are the result of crossbreeding between two different species, usually from the same genus. Hybrid names are written with an X between the genus and specific epithet. The X should not be in italics or underlined. Some species are further divided into subspecies, forma, and varieties, and or cultivars. A subspecies is a naturally occurring, closely related group within a species that is found in the same geographic range but has some distinctly different characteristics. The sugar maple, Acer saccharum, and black maple, Acer saccharum ssp nigrum, are one example. The abbreviation for subspecies, SSP, is not italicized. A form, plural is forma, is similar to a subspecies, but the differences are less obvious and more sporadic. These plants may have slightly different levels of cold hardiness or unique flower colors that randomly appear. Cormus florida f. rubra, the red flowering dogwood, is an example. The abbreviation for forma, f, is not italicized. A variety is a subdivision of a species that has a trait distinctly different from the other plants within the species and naturally breeds true to that trait. Variety names are not capitalized. Cultivars are cultivated varieties that require human intervention, asexual propagation, to reproduce a trait. Cultivars are genetically identical clones. Cultivar names are written within single quotation marks, with the first letter of each word capitalized. Common names should not be capitalized unless they include a proper name, such as European, and they should not be italicized. Scientific names should be written with either underlined or italicized text. Examples of properly written scientific names are Eucalyptus citriodora, lemon scented gum. Gladitia triacanthos, var. Inermis, thornless common honey locust. Acer platinoides, dash crimson king crimson king Norway maple. Amelanchier x grandiflora apple serviceberry. Today, plant nomenclature of cultivated plants is further complicated by the use of trademark names and patented cultivar names. An example of this is Betula nigra, cully, known by the trademark name of Heritage River Birch, Betula nigra Heritage. Cultivar names cannot be trademarked, but com ma names can be. As a result, the rules of botanical nomenclature now state that the cultivar name must be different from the trademark name. Trademark names are never written using single quotation marks, for example, Betula nigra Heritage is incorrect. Basic ID Principles 
Woody plant identification is based on morphology, which is the size, shape, and appearance of plant parts. A fundamental knowledge of woody plant anatomy is therefore essential. Although arborists usually concentrate on the leaves and overall form when identifying trees and shrubs, botanical classification is often based more on the reproductive characteristics, the flowers and the fruit. A good arborist learns to identify trees using many characteristics, including form, bark, buds, twigs, leaves, flowers, fruit, and even scent. This will enable identification in any season. An arborist who learns tree identification by leaves alone will be able to identify deciduous trees only during a portion of the year. Many trees can be identified at a distance based on their form and branching characteristics, growth habit. The American elm, Ulmus americana, with its base-shaped growth habit and overarching limbs, is unmistakable. Sugar maples, Acer sacrum, in the autumn can be picked out of a forest from miles away because of their brilliant fall colors. Live oak, Quercus virginiana, is commonly identified by its spreading habit and Spanish moss. In other instances, however, a group of arborists may find themselves gathered around a plant, closely examining the details of a twig in order to identify it. Recognizing the difference between a simple leaf and a compound leaf is an important first step in identifying many trees. A simple leaf is a single, one part, one blade, needle, etc., leaf that is not subdivided into leaflets. A compound leaf has two or more leaflets, but only a single bud or cluster of buds at the base of the petiole. A leaf is determined by the presence of a bud where it attaches to the stem. It is important to use all available information in tree identification. Identifying some tree species requires recognizing relatively minor leaf, bud, or twig characteristics. For example, the type of leaf margin, shape of the leaf base or leaf apex, presence of hairs on the upper or lower leaf surfaces, or the color of young twigs may be required to distinguish between two closely related species. For winter identification of certain deciduous trees, arborists must be familiar with the characteristics of the bark, branching habit, twigs, buds, fruit, and pith. Tree identification is sometimes based on more than visual senses. Smell, and even taste, may be useful to determine unique characteristics of twigs, leaves, flowers, or fruit. Tropical arborists often have to consider the color of the sap or other obscure characteristics to distinguish similar-looking species. Arborists sometimes use little tricks to help them identify certain species. One such trick helps narrow down the genus based on whether a tree has an opposite or alternate leaf and bud arrangement. For compound leaves, the arrangement of whole leaves should be considered, not the arrangement of leaflets. In temperate North America, Europe, and Asia, most of the trees with opposite leaf arrangement fall into four genera represented by the memory device Mad Horse, for maple, ash, dogwood, and horse chestnut. There are also a few simple ways to distinguish among the major groups of conifers, or cone-bearing trees. Pines, pimus, have needles usually born in clusters of two, three, or five, counting the needles can help identify the species. Spruces, picea, and firs, abies, produce their needles singly. Spruce starts with an S, which helps us to remember that these plants have needles that are short, sharp, single, and square. The needles of firs detach from the stem, leaving a circular pad, whereas spruce needles leave a tiny stalk. Other conifers may have all-like or scale-like foliage. Palms. Palms are classified as monocots and, as such, are related to grasses. The variety within palms is remarkable. There are thousands of species representing more than 200 genera, and they are native to all of the continents except Antarctica. Most of the common species are single stem, others are multi stemmed, some are shrubby, and others are vine like. There are species that can grow more than 200 feet, 65 meters, tall. Coconut palm produces the largest seeds of any plant, 
and they float, allowing them to travel from island to island. Most palm species are native to tropical or subtropical rainforests, but some species are grown as crops, such as coconut, oil palm, ornamentals. Several tropical plants are palm-like, and even named palms, but are technically not palms, for example, sago palm, ponytail palm, dracaena, and yucca. Most palm leaves, fronds, are compound, either palmate or pinnate. Using a key. Many tree and shrub reference books contain identification keys. A key is a step-by-step -step method for unlocking the identity of a plant. Identification keys use terminology that describes the shape, texture, and arrangement of the leaves, bud characteristics, twig shape, and the morphology of flowers and fruits. An identification key may be used to systematically determine the identity of a plant. Most keys consist of a flowchart of yes or no questions. The user narrows down the possibilities by reviewing various visual characteristics of the plant in question. For example, leaf characteristics, such as determining whether the leaf, bud, arrangement is opposite or alternate, whether the plant has simple or compound leaves, whether the leaf margins are serrate or entire, and so on, may be used. A few notes of caution about relying on keys. First, a certain level of expertise and understanding of the terms used in the key is necessary to identify a plant correctly. Second, owing to seasonal differences in plant color and morphology, the plant being identified may not match its written characteristics exactly. Third, not all keys are complete with all trees that might be found in a given region. Finally, genetic variability, plant condition and location, and the environment can affect the size of plant parts or result in some irregularities. Nevertheless, a key is a tool that can be helpful in determining a tree's identity. One drawback to using identification keys in books is that the user can get stuck if unable to answer a question. Online resources and plant identification software usually do not have this drawback. Either way, an understanding of identification terminology is vital. This chapter provided some illustrations and descriptions of a few of these terms.